In the previous lecture, we looked at the certain laws that we assumed to be familiar with, I mean, that you are familiar with. And then we also look at certain conservation laws, work energy theorems. Uh, these are simple concepts and these are core concepts of Newtonian mechanics. Now, before we uh, move to the new topic, the actual material of this semester, I would like to solve one problem, uh, an old problem. You are quite familiar with that problem. It's basically a particle falling uh, along an inclined plane. I would like to solve that in the Cartesian coordinate and then discuss that why Newtonian prescription is giving us a little trouble. And then we will make a scheme where uh, that problem will disappear. So our example is basically an inclined plane. We have an object, it's a point particle, and it's falling under gravity, no other force. It's a it's an inclined plane. So I mean we know the solution intuitively, it will move along this line. So how do we write the equation of motion? Well, uh, one force we can immediately see. This is gravity, it's acting downward. Another force you are familiar with for this problem, it's basically the normal reaction. The normal reaction, you know how to calculate that. First you calculate the component of the gravity along the normal but in the opposite direction. So it would be mg cosine alpha. And this normal component must be equal to that. Why? And because this normal reaction force, it has to balance the component of the gravity. In that case, there is no net force on this object along this direction. So it will not lift up from the surface. It will not go inside the surface. So which means it will only move along the surface, provided the reaction force is this. Okay. So we have to know that. Okay. You would say, I mean, it is intuitively clear that it has to be like that. All right, so be it. At least we got it intuitively. And then let's write down the equations of motion. We start with mass times acceleration is equal to the total force. Uh, and we can write it component wise. The mass times acceleration along x. Let's say this is x and this is y. So along x, what is the force, horizontal force? Um, first of all, we know this is the reaction force. So it must have a horizontal component. And that component would be mg cosine alpha times sine alpha. So it's easy to write. And what about the other equation? A straightforward for mass times acceleration along y, the force gravity is acting downward. So you have minus mg. And the component of the reaction force vertically up, that comes with a positive sign that gives you cosine square alpha, or you can simplify this, this should be mg sine square alpha. These are the equations of motion. Is it correct? Can we do a quick check? Uh, sure. Just take the ratio of these equations, and that will give you. So the direction of acceleration is the tan alpha, the native sign says that it is going down as x increases, y decreases. This is precisely what we expect. So Newtonian scheme, I am not solving this equation because uh, it is trivial uh, and also needs, you need to know the initial condition. That is okay, it is just a merely matter of details. Uh, but 
uh, equation of motions, that is what we wanted to write down and we found it. But what we require is the reaction force at this acting on this object. This is the shortcoming or trouble of Newtonian mechanics. Now, why shortcoming? Um, I should not probably say the shortcoming simply because if you know what the reaction force is coming from this constraint that it cannot move, I mean, cannot leave this surface, it has to move along the surface. Uh, if you know that reaction force, then Newtonian scheme is perfect. You don't need anything else. But often it happens that Although we know the geometrical restriction that it cannot go this way, it cannot go that way, but calculating reaction force or finding out intuitively is not often obvious. A classic example is often cited where you have a building, you have a building and on which a ladder is kept inclined like this. So here is the ladder, one end is resting on the wall and the other is, end is resting on the ground. Now suppose I relieve it and there is no friction whatsoever. In that case, if I ask you what is the constraint, you would be able to say, okay, there is a constraint, it cannot move freely. I say for example, this end of the ladder will have to be always on this line. Hmm. It slides on that. So that means there is a constraint. It is not free. Uh, had it been free, if there is no wall, it would fall like this. Uh, simply because the uh, center of gravity would come down and then uh, there would be a torque about this point and it will fall, it will rotate kind of. Apart from sliding, it would be a complicated dynamics. But here, the constraint number one is this point does not leave this line. And of course, the second constraint is obvious that this point stays on this line. And third constraint is the distance between these two lines is fixed, assuming the ladder is not actually a, 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 a stretchable object. So the question is where are the, um, the forces of reaction, the reaction forces uh, along this direction, maybe perpendicular to this, uh, maybe along this direction. And this could be confusing if you try to calculate it intuitively. But on the other hand, you probably do not have any doubt whatsoever with the specification of the constraint. That is all done perfectly. So this is this is where our this semester's lesson starts. I mean, we'll do it in the next lecture, but the motivation is clear. Or rather, I state it now. Can we get rid of this step of finding out the reaction force of constraint? Can we, can we get the equation of motion simply from the external force and the equation of the constraint, the three condition that I mentioned? From these, can I find out the equation of motion? Then it would be so much easier because intuitions uh, are not easy. And uh, but if there is a mechanical prescription, just write it down, do this, this, and you get your equation of motion. That would be so much easier because everybody would be able to do that. This is precisely uh, this semester's goal to start with the, the first one. So we, that will happen in the next lecture.